Hi, it's Christine from Touchstone Counseling. This is another Finnerty Fast Five. I am so excited. Finnerty Fast Five connects you to the community one person at a time. And today we are in the house of Circa 1880 with Chef Thomas Hawk. Thank you. Thank you so much Thanks for, for spending down. this time with me. You can see the magic of our little tiny breakfast. I know. I'm so excited. We're in the kitchen right now. <laughs> this is where all the magic happens. No, a lot of people don't even know that this little tiny prep kitchen exists. So this is a rare place to be. I love it. When they said that we were going to do it in the prep kitchen, I kind of thought maybe they would be putting me to work. But, you know, he's sitting here. He's doing the work while we're chatting. This is amazing. So can you tell me a little bit about Circa 1880 and how the restaurant came to be? Sure. We are. Uh, we just turned five. So I moved back to Milwaukee from Washington, D.C. with my wife, and we're like, you know, we want to go on our own and open up our own little place. So we started hunting and looking for something small that we could hopefully do a little bit of a renovation, put our imprint on, and start to, to make the food that we like. We knew that we wanted to use local people and local food because the stuff that Wisconsin makes is second to none. We've got the best farmers in the world. And Yes. the best artisans and producers and they give us great product and we wanted to do an area that could showcase that and we wanted to be small and intimate and just do dinner and do it five days a week so did it take long to find this specific location it took about a year and a half okay. so we, we looked around and tried to find the right thing to us and five years ago walker's point was in a totally different situation than it is right now right it's amazing to see the change and how much it's grown and just how much the Milwaukee food scene has changed in the last seven years you know, and I think that um, I was talking with um, Judge Derek Mosley about how food can be transformative for neighborhoods and for totally. communities and uniting people. Do you feel like the food, the restaurant, the push for food here has kind of helped Walker's Point? Yeah, totally. And it, I think it's one of those things that underlines the chef community as a whole in Milwaukee. And it's a real, it's a close-knit community. We're, we're generally friends with each other. And we yeah. want to see each other succeed and we want to help out. And we all do projects that can help one another. When you look at Walker's Point, the number of people that have come down here now, and we all strive to do things together to, to rise the tide for all the folks. Yeah. It's a good thing. Walker's yeah. Point is it's the place now, that's for sure. It is the place. Well, yeah. circa 1880 is definitely <laughs> the place. This is definitely the place to be. All right, so I've got fast five questions for you. All, all right. right. All right, here we go. What is the grossest thing you have ever eaten? The grossest thing I've ever eaten. Um, I don't like tripe at all, so tripe. Okay, so describe tripe to like, tripe people is who a, not know what it is. Tripe is a, uh, a baby cow or a veal stomach. That is tripe. Okay, and how and is it prepared? And it's stewed, and it has the texture of like eating like uh, like snot, like, like you <laughs> say. I don't care for tripe. It's a delicacy to some people, especially the French in the countryside, but I don't care for it. I, I don't know that tripe. it's a delicacy after you say it, it, it's it equivalent is. to eating snot. It, I'm not the, sure. <laughs> the texture of it, you feel it go down, and it's like, yeah, it's not the menudo. It's a popular. Okay, what is that? Uh, same thing. It's a stew. Same thing. It's a tripe. Oh, might have had it. Before. Okay, I might have. Hey, might have. I don't know. Maybe I'm a texture person, so right now I'm like trying to push down. Tri that. Tripe is not high on my list of things that I want to eat. That is okay, the grossest thing. All right, so name three ingredients that every kitchen should have. Salt, vinegar, and butter. Vinegar. Yeah. I kind of thought salt. Vinegar is like so. The key here is acid. Acid is just as important as salt okay. because it's what pulls everything forward and, and accentuates all your taste. Like our body craves it. We, we demand acid. Imagine if you took the acid out of ketchup, what would it taste like? Or barbecue sauce. I guess, yeah. You know, a salad dressing without acid. Right. It's horrible. Acid is something that we need that makes all the notes brighter and makes the song sing. It gives us it's, everything that we need comes from acid. What is something that vinegar is in that we wouldn't think to put vinegar in? Um, so when we do when we, like when we cook vegetables, yeah. So we glaze it with chicken stock and butter. The last thing we do is add like three drops of red wine vinegar or champagne vinegar to it, just to so brighten everything up. up. Everything. You wouldn't even know it's in there. It's one of those things that you don't start like, oh, this is heavy in vinegar. It's really acidic. That's why we like pickles so much. Yeah. 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 Acid makes everything better. I love it. That is not what I thought you would say, but I absolutely love it. All right, you're a James Beard semifinalist. Have you yourself ever had a full beard? <laughs> no, I have not had a full beard. No. Yeah, I feel like somebody, I feel like every man has played with some portion of the facial hair. I mean, there are times when you just get lazy and like, <laughs> like, you know, I don't feel like shaving. I've been not gifted in the uh, hair department, that is for sure. So <laughs> this is about as far as it goes from that. <laughs> okay, so what is your favorite way to spend your time when you're not in the kitchen? Oh, my two boys and my wife. Do it's it's awesome. So on Mondays, my wife is a uh, first grade teacher. So on Mondays, the boys don't go to daycare, so it's just me and my two little buddies. Aww. My oldest is four and my youngest is one, so we kick it. 
You do. Three little boys running around rolling on the floor wrestling. I love it. Wrestling it is, with your boys. It is the best thing in the world. That's perfect. So how old are your boys? Four and one. Four and one. Well, I knew you had two boys. I didn't yeah. know their ages. Yeah. Last question is, what is their favorite food? Uh, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> that is. I don't know. My youngest, Flint, will literally Is this anything. homemade macaroni and cheese oh, or is no. it like out of the box? It is Annie's macaroni and cheese. <laughs> but Sandy demands it to be chefed up a little bit. He wants it extra cheesy, please. So we have to add a little parm and a little cheddar and a little more butter. So he's salt. developing his palate. He's developing up. My oldest is like the pinkest eater in the world. But macaroni and cheese, can, he can win on him at any time. My youngest, <laughs> will he'll attack anything. He's built like me. Okay. We're, we're the older Sammy. He's built like my wife. She's real thin. Okay. So Sammy takes after her. I absolutely Flint will love just it. sit there and he'll... He don't even care. He'll just rifle and then pass out my head check. Chicken nuggets. Oh, yeah. Hot uh, pizza, cheeseburger, yeah. <laughs> Feed me. Yeah. He doesn't quite understand who he has as his father. Yeah, not yet. He'll, I think he'll reap the benefit He's one He's developing day. his yeah, palate. Yeah. I love sure. it. Well, that's five questions. This is how quick this goes. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I have a couple discussion questions. Okay. I want to get your opinion on. Um, yes. What I love most about food and why I was so excited that you agreed to do this with me is because I feel like food has the unique ability to connect people and mm -hmm. to, um, it's a great unifier, it brings people together. Totally. And I think that, um, again, I had sat down with uh, Judge Derek Mosley and he said, you know what, if you're able to sit down and break bread with someone, mm -hmm. that means everything. Totally. And when you sit down to share a meal with someone, you're face to face, you're connecting, you're communicating, you're, you're building that, that development of a social network. Do you think that that had any influence on your desire to cook for people? Yeah, we eat dinner as a family every night. It was times that we would always celebrate or do things like if we went for a special occasion like a birthday or anniversary or something happened, we would go to a restaurant. Yeah. And those like the the orchestration and the dance, what would happen at the restaurant was always exciting. Yeah. And I still remember my sister's first communion. We went to a really fancy restaurant in Atlanta. It was right on the river and they had swans and everybody was wearing bow ties and tuxedos and there was a Gary Dong like the fancy part of the restaurant. Yeah. That stuff stays with you. It and does. it's neat to be able to be a part of something to where like you can help make a memory. Yes. We joke that we want the whole life cycle. Right. So we want the first date, the engagement, the wedding, the childbirth, maybe the divorce. Yes. And then the funeral, if we yes. can get it all. We, yeah. want, we want to celebrate all of life's milestones. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's, it's a powerful thing. Like Then every year when that comes up again, it's like, oh yeah, remember that dinner we had at Circa? And That's like, right. And if, if we do that, we've done something right. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. And I love that you said it's the full it's the full circle of yeah. life. It really is. And it's hard to have a celebration with something without food and all. Absolutely. I mean, in college, you can get away with just the drink aspect. Right. But once you start to go to be an adult, it's hard to celebrate without a good meal and food. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you go to parties, everybody congregates in the kitchen. That's where the food is. It's where it's it where is. It's where it's happening. Yeah. It's in the kitchen. This yeah. is where it's happening. <laughs> okay, so speaking of gathering together, I'm very excited to ask you this question. Okay. All right. So you can, this, you, you had a wish that's been granted, okay. and you can dine in any restaurant, past or present. Okay. And you're inviting four people. You're making a reservation for four or okay. three other people. And he, I want to know. Am I supposed what, to include my spouse? You can invite whoever you want. I mean, I, my wife would come with me. Can I still get three more people? Yes. So okay. now it's there a reservation is. for five. Table for five. Yes, I like a table for five because we have to include your wife. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And we're going to exclude the kids because they're having hot dogs and mac and cheese. They're they totally get, fine. Yep, we got a babysitter yeah, for fine. them. They're fine. So past or present restaurant. Okay. What restaurant are you dining and with whom are you dining? Past or present? Who is your dream? Okay. Team? So I would eat at the at the Ritz in Paris. Okay. And Escoffier was the chef. So okay. like 1905. Okay. Like the height of grand cuisine. I love this. And I would probably eat, I would eat with my father. Okay. I would eat with Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton. And the Dalai Lama. I think we would have a fantastic time together. And what do you think that conversation would be I like? don't know. I imagine there'd be some drug talk for a little while. I think there'd be some talk about happiness. And then we'd talk about fishing or something like that. I love yeah. this answer. This I, is fantastic. It'd be a fun dinner, that's for sure. That would be. Now, yeah. why are you picking this time frame specifically? I think that is the hype. So when you look at like the way the French kitchen works, and it's called the brigade system. So yeah. you have a chef, a sous chef, chef de parties, commies, and sausages. Chef de parties? So that's like the guy that cooks the meat. Okay. He is the chef de partie for the meat. And then there's the guy, the poissonnier, he's the guy that cooks the fish. Okay. So one guy cooks the meat, one guy cooks the fish, they work together, we get it to the pass, the chef sends it out. Yes. This is a system designed by uh, the Scoffier. Okay. He is the chef of kings, the king of chefs. He is like, he's the dude. He is. He was the chef there. So, That's 
amazing. It would be fun. It'd be cool to see too. Like I would, cause, well, cause I would like see, in your I mind, would tune in to see this. Yeah, like in your mind, you'd be like, how could it? Have you ever built something up to where like there's no way you could possibly meet the expectations? Yes. Or, yeah. Well, that's where this would be. Like you would expect complete perfection on every aspect of all. And you would just have the coolest people to be doing. It would be pretty cool. It would. It I would love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, that's what I want you guys to be doing. I want these videos are all about connecting with one another and having conversation, building community, and social support for one another. And food does this. I am so grateful that you did this interview with me. Know, I'm yeah. so happy to get to know yeah, you yeah. better and to introduce you to everyone out there who is now going to come on in to circa 1880. Keep having conversations, keep connecting, keep communicating, and we will see you next time. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I absolutely, My this pleasure. is wonderful. Thank you. Now we're going to eat. <laughs>